Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts with Song Goats here, and what you just saw me doing was playing finger style, uh, but I was doing it in three quarter time using Travis picking. And until this past couple days, that's something I've never done before. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here in today's lesson. And this is gonna be answering a question that came in from Steve. So Steve over in the Song Goats community, thanks for your support, Steve. Uh, you wrote in asking about, you know, do you have or can you make a lesson on finger picking in three quarter time? For example, John Prine's song, Paradise, right? So Steve, I'm gonna help you out. I gave you a quick response when your email came in, but spending some more time with this, I put together some additional notes and exercises that I think you might find helpful and anyone else watching, if you're interested in finger style and you want to sort of uh, be able to play in that three quarter time waltz feel, this lesson is going to be perfect for you. So I'll show you a little riff inspired by the John Prine song Paradise, right? Same chord progression and everything. And then later on, I'll look at Amazing Grace, right? The traditional song. I'll show you how you can use those same picking approaches. Play Amazing Grace. I'll show you a simple version as well as a more complex version, which adds the vocal melody notes into your playing, right? So it should be really helpful for you. And I do have a six page PDF that gives you notes on everything I'm about to show you, um, including just how to approach this, how to think about this, the simple version and the more complex version of that key of D, John Prine inspired exercise I mentioned, as well as Amazing Grace. The taps for Amazing Grace are in here. It's a public domain song, so I'm able to include this and uh, give it away over at my website, songnotes.net. So get the PDF over there. Links are in the description. I have a few slow playthrough videos as well if you want to just refer to that after this main tutorial. It's all there waiting for you, as well as all my other Travis picking lessons. So let's get into this one, y'all. Uh, Steve, I'm excited to show you this. And anyone else looking to level up your finger picking game, this is going to be a good one. So let's get to it. All right, so let's kick things off off with a quick recap of Travis picking. What do we mean by Travis picking? So what I have on the screen right now is a sample chord, right? D major in this case. You could use any chord in this example. I just want to show you the difference of finger picking in four, four time versus three quarter time and, and why that's going to matter. Now, if it's four, four time, right? Four beats per measure. Um, the bass note with your right thumb is going to go between the root note, whatever chord you're playing, and then some other note. So in this case, I'm going between fourth string, third string, and I'm just alternating back and forth, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The right thumb does the bass notes, and then what would happen is, I don't have it tabbed out here yet, but the right index finger is going to do melody notes, and that's going to be the stuff we're going to play on the thinner strings. So an example melody might be... Right? But look at the right thumb. See how it's bouncing? Okay, in 4-4 four, four time, it's easy to do that because mathematically you have four beats per measure and then you're just alternating between two strings. So you just do each string twice per measure and it just, the math works out, right? One, two, three, four, new measure. One, two, three, four. Okay, now three quarter time, it gets tricky because one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. In this world, we can't just alternate the same way because the measure is gonna end when we're on the, we're not on the, you know, we're not set up to play the root string again. So it's gonna sound weird. So what I think the general suggestion would be when it's in three quarter time, what you're gonna to wanna to do is do the root note on the one count, and then on the two and the three count, do the the other string. So that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we can add melody notes, right? I'll show that a little bit later. But this is the most important thing you wanna get started with is just the mastering that groove, right? It's a different kind of vibe. Um, I kind of I kind of like really emphasize an accent, at least in my mind or in my body, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Make sure that root note gets the sort of accent. Okay, let's just look at some examples here. So right on the screen right now is the key, uh, the chords of D, G, and A. Now, um, a little bit later, I'll show you C, F, and G. And my point is like, hey, let's take some real chords and let's look at how to pick them in three quarter time. Now, D, G, and A, that's gonna let us play Paradise by John Prine, okay? So for the D, the regular D chord, what I'm gonna be doing is the same bass notes I showed you. Those are highlighted in yellow. Then I'm gonna do these really light, really light melody notes on the second, uh, second string. G. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, A. Back to D. Okay, nothing musically stellar so far, but these are all the building blocks you need 
if you want to play, say, in this case, Paradise by John Prine. Or a little bit later, I'll show you Amazing Grace as well to show you an example of this um, in practice. So let's look at uh, what this might be like. So Paradise by John Prine, it's this chord progression. In the key of D, it's going to be uh, D two three D two three G two three D two three D two three D two three A two three D two three. And the whole song uses that progression, okay? We could put a capo in the second fret and use the key of C, the chords I show you here. But, um, you know, you could, if you wanted to strum, I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be a strumming lesson, but, you know, Mama, won't you take me down to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise long Right? You can play the whole song like that, but we're finger picking. So here, I'm gonna show you how you can use the patterns I showed you before, and we just play each pattern once per each chord on the screen, and we get a solution to your question, Steve. So on the screen now, I have these eight measures, okay? This is just going through D, D, G, D, and then D, D, A, D. Now, um, I'll talk about these patterns. The D is the same one. For the G, this is the only thing I want to call out, is I'm using this sort of specialty voicing in a G where I'm going to keep this ring finger here, okay? And uh, I'm going to keep my index finger here as well. The same notes they're on for the D. I'm just going to move my middle down here for the G. I think this is actually an easier transition to do because you're going from D, you just move your middle, and that's all you're doing for those first two chords. So to play that, right, D, G, D. Second line. A, D, okay? Now you could you could sing Paradise just like this. This is a relatively simple melody pattern here, right? I'll show you something more fancy in a minute, but start with the simple stuff. Get a hang over it, or get a hang of it first, right? So, Mama, won't you take me down to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where Paradise found? Sorry, I don't have the words memorized, but you get the idea. You could play the whole song using this picking pattern. Okay, now what you have here, I have it in my PDF, you can print it out. This is something great to practice and get, get the hang of each chord first, um, go through it slow, and you could use this and play the entire song. But I wanna show you how you could level things up because one of the fun things about Travis picking is adding some of the more uh, melodic flair on the thinner strings while you're doing the bass stuff. And I'll show you how you can do that in three quarter time. So I have two examples on page three of my uh, PDF that's attached to this lesson, okay? These are examples of me doing more complex melody stuff. So this is the kind of stuff you wouldn't play when you're singing. If you're singing, you want to use a simple picking pattern, okay? The, because the guitar is in the background, it's providing like tonal context, but your voice is providing the melody. But when you're done singing, like say someone said to me, hey, play Paradise with us. I want you to do guitar, do finger style. And in between the third and the fourth verse, I want you to do a instrumental solo with your acoustic guitar. This is what the kind of thing I would play, okay? So you're gonna notice here the bass notes are the same for the D, for the G. Actually, for this G, I'm not gonna do that specialty voicing anymore. I'm gonna go to a regular G, okay? Then back to a D, and then second line to A, and then to D, okay? So again, you wanna have those bass notes under your control, but when you get a hang of it, then you can play this full, uh, this full thing. It's gonna sound like this. couple quick tips here what I just played is whenever you see the gray line it's always going to be on the one count of each measure that just means it's a pinch and by a pinch I mean you're playing your right thumb and your right index note at the same time and you're doing a pinching motion okay I just do that to for a little bit of a visual clarity the H with the little uh, parentheses thing on top that represents a hammer on so for that second measure your the first measure would be right you're gonna pinch the open first and open fourth string but then you're gonna hammer on that second fret of the thinnest string, okay? Um, and then the other tip I'll have, I have for this is at the end of each line, you're gonna end on a D. If you want, you can just hang out on a D for a bit and just do the bass notes, right? And that's a way to sort of uh, let things settle. You don't have to be in a rush with this. You can go to the next line when you're ready. And you'll hear that John Prine actually does that in, um, 
his version of Paradise, okay? And now the cool part is we could take what I just played right there and we could extend it. We could change the melody up and do something totally different, right? So I'm gonna play this next. This is another example of something that's going to be um, using, you know, a more complex melody notes. It's even much more, it has some stretching to the fifth fret, so this is a bit trickier. But my point is, if you asked me to play a, you know, an, uh, a 16 measure solo, instrumental Travis picking with, you know, fancy melodies, here's what I would play if you put me on the spot. And obviously I had to practice. <laughs> This second one is a lot harder and it's probably just beyond uh, what I would feel comfortable doing if you put me on the spot to do it like perfectly. I'd have to slow down and really practice this. So my point in showing you this is you can do multiple versions of the melody. And that's the great thing about Travis picking is as you get more comfortable, you're gonna find yourself naturally kind of getting a sense of like, what are the notes in this key, right? In the key of D we have this, 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 this. Um, usually all my melody notes are coming just from those strings. And then it's how can I apply those melody notes over the D, the G, and the A chord in a way that makes for a fun little compelling little solo there, okay? So um, that's how you do that second um, approach. Again, it's really tricky to do. That stretch is really tricky. Don't feel like you have to, uh, you should be able to do that necessarily. But my point, again, is showing you that, that these uh, variations are possible, all right? So I hope you all found this helpful so far. Now, I'm gonna continue things in part two, which is over on my website, where I'm gonna look at Amazing Grace, right? The traditional song, and show you how you can take these approaches we've taken so far and apply them to that song. And I'll, it'll have a simple version Version, right? Very simple melody notes. You can sing over it, right? Really nice getting started point. And then I'll show you a sort of more complex version where you can take the vocal melody of Amazing Grace and tie that into the thinnest string. So that way you can sort of make it sound like an instrumental version of Amazing Grace. So two different difficulties, right? You start with the basic one, you can build up and go to the more complex one. I have tabs for both. They're in the PDF that I have available. Again, it's six pages, uh, made with care by me. It gives you the notes and tabs for everything I showed you in this lesson, including including Amazing Grace, right? It's a public domain song, so I can include it in here. Uh, made with absolute care, y'all. I really want you to check this one out. Um, and of course, uh, members over on my website, you get access to slow playthrough videos of this and for all my other lessons in my courses as well, right? So there's a huge treasure trove of these PDFs um, and premium lessons in my courses that are available with membership. So if you're not a member and you've watched this far, I am certain you will enjoy it and find it helpful. It'll really help you feel better about your guitar playing. So please check that out. It's very affordable. You can cancel anytime, no commitment, all that sort of thing. It really is uh, aiming to help you get where you want to go with the guitar. And it's my true joy and passion to be teaching this. So please check out my website, songnotes.net. You can find the rest there. All the links are in the description. I have plenty other of finger style and Travis picking lessons as well. And um, I'll see you over there, my friends. Until then, take care and bye-bye. <laughs>